Hi everyone, my name is Ashley Poston and the AC is out and it's about 100 degrees outside. So, I'm gonna recommend you some thirsty YA books to keep you cool. So, first up is Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins. I mean, I'm talking Paris. I'm talking the city of love. I'm talking a sweet, sweet, sweet little small Hufflepuff boy named Edna. Oh, why am I still carrying around my sweat rags? It's fine. Anyway, it is so good. I mean, this romance of the school year is just... Oh, it's everything you need to keep it nice and cool. Honestly, Stephanie Perkins walked so the rest of YA could run. And next up after that is The Opposite of Always by Justin A. Reynolds. It's time travel, it's lovers. It's like Romeo and Juliet-ish, but without the dying. Well, there's a little dying because the main character falls in love with someone. Did I lose my hat? I think I lost my hat. I did lose my hat. Anyway, the main character falls in love with someone who ends up dying and then he ends up magically transported back in time to before she was dead. So now she has to keep her from dying. But when she does, the butterfly effect happens and well, is this a happy ending? Mm -hmm. I can't tell. <laughs> Only time will tell. <laughs> I'm so funny. Next up on the list is The Season by Sarah McLean. Yeah, that's right. That's Sarah McLean. Like, the one who writes the most amazing, heart-wrenching, thirsty adults. Rom-coms set in Regency era, but this one is her YA, and uh, let's just say it's super thirsty. I mean, it's ball gowns, it's dances, it's Mr. Darcy's literally nowhere. Like, literally nowhere. What's a poor girl who doesn't want anything to do with that cult life do? Well, if she's lucky, she's going to, you know, hook up with that hunka hunka burning son of the murdered Earl, but, you know, we'll, we'll see if that happens. Next up on the list is Fruits Basket by Natsuki Takia. It is about the cursed Soma family who, if they are hugged by members of the opposite sex, they turn into... Members of the Chinese Zodiac! Isn't that right, Pepper? Isn't that right? She wants nothing to do with me right now, I can tell. Anyway, so it is about family and bonding and about a girl named Toru who goes to go live with them and phew, there's cat hair everywhere. Now that's great. And it is heartwarming and it is swoony and it's beautiful and it deconstructs like family trauma and the death of a loved one in a way so well that I have yet to find its equal. So I just want everyone to just swoon with me and also cry with me. Please cry with me because I am such a crier. <laughs> Next up on the list is The Summer of Jordi Perez by Amy Spaulding. I'm talking queer girls, I'm talking romance, I'm talking fashion, I'm talking body positivity. It is about a girl named Abby who gets an internship at a boutique with this other girl who she ends up kind of falling in love for, but the sitch is they're both competing for a job at the end of the summer. So will this romance go down in flames or will it burn? Anyway, you'll have to read it to find out. <laughs> next up on my list is an oldie but goodie, along with the next few, actually, because I'm an old. It's just the way it is. Anyway, next up is A Great and Terrible Beauty by Libba Bray. It is petticoats, it's murder, it's supernatural, it's when a young woman moves from India back to the UK after her mother's mysterious death and goes to boarding school. The stuff that killed her mother comes after her, and there's a really hot love interest. <sighs> Libba, I just want to tell you, I am only speaking to you right now. I have not been over this trilogy since I read it, like 15 years ago. So, <sighs> I think we should get down to the root of the problem, actually. I believe we need another book. Uh, would you kindly write one? I'm sure you have a draft in a trunk or something. Everyone who's read that truly knows exactly what I just did. We see each other. We see each other. We understand. We just bonded. That just happened. And next up on the list is Brightly Woven by Alexandra Bracken. 
It is wizards. It is weaving magic. It is so swoon worthy. I just can't even. And wait. Wait a second. What? It's out of print? What? How? How is this book out of print? No, 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 no. I will not. I will not accept this. I will not accept this. No, no, no. Rest in the pages, my sweet wizard. <laughs> All right, next up is Eyes Like Stars by Lisa Manchev. Now I'm talking airy air spirits. I'm talking pirates. I'm talking a magical theater that makes play characters come to life. I'm talking a triangle romance that is just so good. <sighs> Birdie has a lot to choose from and she has to save her theater, but to do that she's gonna have to rely on both boys and they might not both have the same desire or intent in mind. That sounds saucy, but it's not as saucy as you think it is. They're just got their own things going on, as you do, you know, got some betraying going on, got some, you know, anti-hero stuff going on, got some brooding going on, and it's great. And next up is a Beauty and the Beast-esque retelling. It's called Katora and Lord Death by Martine Leavitt. It is about a girl who wanders into the woods after the legendary stag and ends up getting lost and she almost dies but then a noble lord comes and he ends up being death himself. And she tells him a story and he's like I like that story I'm gonna give you 24 hours to uh, find your true love and I won't kill you. So she's gotta go and find her true love but you know all I'm saying is maybe <coughs> she already found it. <clears throat> you can love death, can't you? Beetlejuice. <laughs> Next up is I Believe in a Thing Called Love by Marine Goo. I'm talking a girl who's really bad at flirting, flirting with a guy who is name bucklingly handsome. And because she is so bad at it, she turns to the one thing, the one handbook to rule them all. Her encyclopedia of K dramas. Next up is A Shadow Bright and Burning by Jessica Kloos. I'm talking wizards again. I'm talking magic. I'm talking chosen one tropes. I'm talking love triangles. You know what? Come to think of it, I'm not really all that into love triangles, but when you add in some magic and a dash of, you know, demons, I'm kind of all for it. Next up is Open Road Summer by Emery Lord. I'm talking hot musicians. I'm talking shenanigans. I'm talking music. I guess being best friends to country's hottest music station has its perks because one, Reagan gets to be plus one on her best friend's 24 city tour, which is kind of awesome, but she's also going to find out just how easy she can uh, <clears throat> catch some trouble to the tune of a boy who is sweet as cherry pie. Next up is Let's Talk About Love by Claire Kahn. I'm talking asexual romance. I'm talking really, really hot librarians. I'm talking oh, all the romantic hijinks tropes you could want. Just like slay me now. This book navigates love, sexuality, and all of the feelings in between so expertly. I felt it in my bones. My hat's falling off. Last up on the list is To Kill a Kingdom by Alexander Cristo. I'm talking murderous mermaids. I'm talking sailing princes. I'm talking enemies to lovers. It is nothing but, you know, sexual tension and murdering and heart collecting and lots of feels. So Lyra's really good at catching men's hearts, right? Like literally like taking their hearts. But when she accidentally kills one of her own, she uh, gets punished by her mom by growing legs and being sent to the surface. And so when she does, she's uh, saved by a really hot prince who turns out she's got to harvest his heart and take it back to her mom if she wants her fins again. Which, ooh, tough choice. All right, I think that's it for this video. My name is Ashley Poston. I am Epic Reads' author in residence, and thank you so much for going on this thirst-filled journey with me. <sighs> Cannot wait to get AC.